Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Six Minute Escape, presented by the Arts Council Halliburton Highlands and Halliburton Reads and Writes. My name is Kate Butler, and I'm chair of the Arts Council Halliburton Highlands. And my name is Erin Kernahan Burning, and I'm with the Halliburton County Public Library. Our fall edition of Six Minute Escapes was all about being beyond the borders of home. Our spring edition is all about transformation. So this evening, we're going to be sharing with you seven short videos all on that theme of transformation. And we also feel that a lot of them have, um, have something to do with the theme of connection as well. And we'll talk about that as we go through. So our first video this evening is brought to us by Kathleen Dewar. And Kathleen's work is all about transforming items from the natural world into art. So Kathleen's gonna take us for a bit of a tour around her studio and talk about her artistic practice and her inspiration. So we'll hand it over to Kathleen. Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Kathleen. And this is where I craft leather into art to honor animals by transforming their gifts into landscapes and designs that reflect the beauty of Mother Earth. Reflections of Earth's beauty like this winter bouquet. I will explain why I love working with leather. We'll demonstrate some techniques while I share some reflections on animals. Please, let's have a visit. Like any art form, leather has its own unique voice that connects us to our emotions, to our feelings, even to memory. By choosing colors like these, and by adding texture, I create stories that evokes our connection to the world around us. Let me demonstrate by showing how I do that with this piece. So this is a concept I have of a mountain scene under a night sky. I've gathered the different textures and colors to represent that kind of dusk, sunset feeling that we want. I'm going to add these colors to continue feeling that depth. So as you can see, there is the concept I'm working on. Now, can't you just hear a wolf howling through those canyons? Perhaps there's bears dreaming in these caves. The foxes camouflaged in the undergrowth, observing. Owls swooping, bringing their magic. The deer gathering in the glades, reminding us to be kind to one another. Perhaps there's rabbits hopping in the meadows. So what I wanted to add to this, of course, is humans camping up in the mountains, sharing this landscape with the animals. Now there's an honoring of Mother Earth. I promised to demonstrate some of my techniques. So with this piece, I will show you how my garden grows. Come, let me show you. As you can see, I've set the stage. I have the grasses, the rich dark soil, some stones. I've cut the petals out of leather ahead of time, glued them on this patch of leather. With my hole punch, I punch two holes in the center. And then I will punch a hole in the leather where I want the flower to be placed. And the wire will go through and secure that flower in place. I will do the same with this one. The rest will be glued when I have decided where to place them. I will then complete the, some of the final details. Look at that, doesn't that just make that pop? I will then, when I complete a piece, take some tape and with the sticky side, pick up any of the lint or dirt that has accumulated. Don't wanna pick up any ants though, there could be ants in there helping the garden grow. 
There's a lizard sleeping in the rich soil. Perhaps a frog will leap away. Perhaps a hummingbird will swoop down to enjoy the nectar. A butterfly may land quietly on one of the petals. Perhaps I've startled a snake. Look at that snake skin. And he's dancing to another section of the grass to sleep. So that is how my garden grows. I have had so much fun introducing you to the versatility, variety, and vibrancy of working with leather. I'm grateful to illustrate my ideas, concepts, and stories. And the use of leather and how I transform it into reflections of Earth's beauty. Thank you. Thank you for visiting. It's time to say farewell. And with that, I'm going to leave you with this. It's winter in Canada. What kind of stories can I create with this? <laughs> Bye now. See you soon. Thank you, Kathleen. And if any of you are still curious about what any of our presenters do, um, don't forget to come to our Six Minute Escapes after party. The link is in the description below. So once this uh, presentation has ended, there will be time for you to click through to that. So our next video is coming to us from Danielle Martin. So Danielle has just recently joined the board of the Arts Council Halliburton Highlands and we're delighted to have her on the board. Um, Danielle is also an artist in her own right and her video is all about her own personal transformation connected to her time studying at Halliburton School of Art and Design and how that has affected her own personal artistic practice. We'll hand it over to Danielle. Hello everyone, my name is Danielle Martin and I'm a local artist here in the Highlands. I run my own business called Shapeshifter and I specialize in doing digital art and murals. I consider myself to be a cosmic creator, one who creates work through the essence of the universe. My art intertwines both the realms of spirit and of art. The kind of transformation that I want to talk to you here today is all about self-transformation. To give some context to my own story and the work that I create, I went to the Halliburton School of Art and Design for three years to pursue my passion. And during my first year, we had this course called Dreams and the Collective Unconscious. In that course, we learned about dreams and the three minds that we have, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the unconscious mind. We also learned about the ego, psychology, um, different world religions and spiritual practices, and much, much more. Buddhism and Hinduism really caught my attention, and this is what initially led me into learning about vast spiritual practices and ancient teachings and wisdom. I discovered the chakra systems, different energies, and how they worked throughout the universe, and meditation, and this is where I really got hooked. I became borderline obsessed with all of this new knowledge that I was learning and how to live a more conscious and present life. The next year after that, I ended up doing my whole thesis project on mindfulness and meditation, and I have been an avid meditator ever since. Learning about all these concepts and newfound knowledge that was pouring into my life through the books and research um, and lessons that we were learning started to awaken something deep inside of me, but it was something that I couldn't actually verbally explain. An energetic shift was starting to occur within me, and my kundalini energy was starting to awaken. I didn't know it at the time when all of this was going on, but looking back now, I know that this point in, in my life was exactly when I started my spiritual awakening. It felt like for the first time in my life that I was starting to open up my eyes. I felt so much more connected to nature, more than I ever had been in my entire life. Like I was truly a part of it and started to realize that we really are all connected. 
I was truly starting to listen to the birds singing their songs and the sun and how it radiated its energy and its heat through my body and really feeling it, being so conscious and so mindful and so present of every thought that was going through my mind, every action that I was taking, this sense of consciousness and being present in my life really overturned everything. I was also starting to be very mesmerized by other humans around me and watching them go through their daily life like we always do and like I always have. But this time I started to feel really disconnected to my other fellow humans and I started to feel like an observer um, in, in this world that I was a part of, this distant observer watching from afar, watching from above and it, it started to feel like I was this ghost operating in such this 3D material world. I was in a constant state of reflection about life. The questions started arising within me of, you know, why are we here? Um, what's, what's my purpose? And why are we floating on this huge rock in the middle of this vast abyss of cosmos, of trillions and billions of, of other stars and other galaxies and planets? And these questions just started turning every single day over and over again, wanting these answers to this eternal life that we live. It truly felt like I was just high all the time, living in this completely separate world, but in reality, I've, I was in the same place that I always have been. All of these feelings and thoughts and curiosities that have taken over my world started to transmute themselves into my artwork, into my own authentic creative expression. My work became so subjective to this experience and this transformation that I was going through. I became the center of my own work and I started dissecting all my inner worlds kind of like I was my own scientist and I was my own lab rat in this science lab. As one year led to the next, I kept discovering more and more doors within myself that had yet to be discovered and opened. It was interesting because every single time that I felt like I had a grasp of this new found reality that I was now living, something new would pop up and I would be led down that exact road of more mystery. But I would come out of it more integrated, more powerful, and more wiser. Whether it was limiting belief systems that needed to be let go of, shadow work, inner child work that needed to be confronted, it has been a continuous cycle of death and rebirth, and I truly, truly believe that that's what life is all about. Aligning with our soul, activating our inner power, and accelerating our consciousness. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I specialize in digital illustrations, but I am also a writer, and I write a lot of poetry. Many of my pieces of art that I've created have a poem that accompanies them. I absolutely love to intertwine visual arts and literary arts together. I personally think of them as yin and yang, having that complete balance of one another. Thank you all so much for tuning into my own story on my personal transformation. I hope that I've been able to bring value to you and that you've been able to take away something from this short virtual time that we've had together. I hope that by me sharing my own spiritual self journey will encourage others to do the same. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Danielle. That was wonderful. And I know that there are so many stories around our community of people whose artistic practice has been shaped and transformed by studying at Halberton School of Art and Design. Who do we have next, Erin? Our next presenter is Marcy Mandel, and she provides us an experience where the landscape has the ability to transform you and remind you that it is important to live in the moment. So we'll hand it over to Marcy. to live in the moment 
and without expectations is to live where the magic happens. Thank you, Marcy. That was wonderful. When we were trying to decide on the theme for this six minute escape, uh, transformation seemed to be particularly apt because as we all know, our lives over the last year have been transformed uh, by the, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been happening all around us. It's transformed our daily lives, but we know now that there are brighter days ahead. Erin, who do we have next? So we have a uh, photographer and digital artist, June Crisco, and her video is really interesting because she's not relying on narration here to tell us a story. So um, don't adjust your volume. It's, uh, this is, her video is a visual experience. Um, she is showing us a number of different types of transitions, the transitions of the seasons in Halliburton County, the transition of inspiration to representation in her digital art, and the well, I'll let the video tell you the rest of the story for itself. So on to June's submission.
Thank you, June, for taking us through both Halliburton's seasons as well as your artistic process. So our next video is brought to us by local author, Marie Gage. And Marie is going to take us on a journey which explores connection to family, culture and history, and also a story all about the transformation of a landscape. I'm gonna let Marie's story speak for itself because it's very powerful. Hello everyone. I'm so happy you could join us as we explore the multifaceted concept of transformation. I will be reading a story I wrote that was published in this book, 88 More Ways Music Can Change Your Life. It's a book of inspirational stories for the music lover's soul. I hope you enjoy my contribution. The story I wrote that was published in this book is titled, The Trail of Tears, Music in a Sacred Place. In Alabama, there is a memorial to an incredible indigenous woman of the Yuchi people. It was built by her great-great-grandson, Tom Hendricks, from rock taken one at a time from the river known as the Singing River. As the water flows over the shoals in a place now known as Muscle Shoals, the voice of a woman living in the river could be heard by the Yuchi people. Tilane, Tom's great-great-grandmother, was forced to leave this sacred place and march to Oklahoma on the Trail of Tears when she was but a young woman. She spent one winter there searching for a river that sang. She found nothing that would fill the hole in her spirit left by the absence of the voice from the river. She made the decision to leave Oklahoma and travel back to her home, back to the singing river. It was against the law for her to return, so she hid under cover of darkness, traveling alone at night. It took five years and the overcoming of many obstacles before she finally arrived home. On a December morning in 2015, my husband and I had the privilege of visiting the site of her memorial. We spent hours listening to Tom tell of Tilanae's journey and the tale of how the Wichapi commemorative stone wall came to be. Wichapi means like the stars. Tom said his inspiration for building the wall came from the words of a Yuchi elder. He said, all things shall pass, only the stones shall remain. We were visiting the memorial that day with singer songwriter friend Linda McRae who had researched Tilanae's story and captured it in a song titled, Singing River. She hoped to share the song with Tom during our visit. It's hard to explain the feelings generated while walking through this memorial pathway bordered by this lovingly created stone wall. It's as if the rocks have absorbed memories that are shared as feelings with whomever walks amongst them. One part is straight to commemorate the path of the journey from Alabama to Oklahoma. The rest is curved and circuitous symbolizing her long journey home. The emotions evoked at various parts of the wall are remarkable in their differences. Within this memorial structure built on private land owned by Tom and his family is a small outdoor amphitheater. A gently curved part of the memorial wall is the backdrop. Stone seats are scattered through the tree covered area facing this section of wall. Each seat has two stone legs and one on top forming the seating surface. There is a red prayer ribbon only one of the many hanging around the memorial site, swaying in the gentle breeze as Linda takes her place to perform her song. It is early morning and our group of six are alone 
in the amphitheater with Tom. Linda takes a seat in front of the stone wall with Tom sitting nearby facing her. She lifts her guitar and strums the opening bars of the song she has lovingly crafted. Her voice lifts to tell the story of Tilanae's journey. She is hoping for Tom's approval, hoping she has captured the essence of this woman. The rest of us watch in rapt silence as the world fades to only Tom and Linda. Seeing him clench his fist and tap his heart gives flight to Linda's strong voice as it rises to the treetops and resonates on the stones of Tilanae's wall. Goosebumps form as the song moves on. They are not the usual goosebumps. They are in some unfathomable way magnified by the resonance of the environment in which we are ensconced. My heart clenches and a lump forms in my throat as tears begin to fall. Linda intensifies her voice as she sings the words, singing river, take me home. She adds percussion by striking the side of her guitar and stamping one foot in time to the music, mimicking the steps of Tilanae as she once, long ago, move towards home. Chills course up my spine and the hairs on the back of my neck stand at attention. Tom rises and hugs Linda, making the sign of the third eye on her forehead as he releases her. The third eye is an indigenous concept suggesting a higher state of enlightenment. Our own trail of tears flows freely then Tears for the journey of a brave woman, tears for the societal wrongs, and tears for the song that captured it for future generations. Music does that. It captures history and transmits it to future generations, ensuring no one will forget and hoping no one repeats the wrongs. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. So next up, we have the song uh, Singing River by Linda McRae, featuring her performance at the Wachapi Commemorative Wall with the late Tom Hedricks, who uh, was the creator of that wall. So let's listen in. I am a huge healer, daughter of the sun Woman with the dancing eyes, born above the shoulder bone Of a Tennessee River Valley, where I was taken from the shore My five-year walk began, and the river sang me home One day in May we were forced to leave, never to return Spirits were defenseless against shiny buttons thirst With a metal tag number 59 they stole my dignity The one thing I missed most their rivers did not sing Singing river I slipped away one morning, prayed with every step Great Spirit, if you guide me, I'll be forever in your debt On the dark path of the devil's backbone Please give my feet wings as I retrace my steps Cross a trail of tears, I'll hymn a river sing Singing river
the river There's a voice so pure and true If you can hear her You're one of a chosen few All things shall pass on earth Only the stones remain My five year walk began Now I'm back in my birthplace Singing river Sing me home Singing river Sing me home Singing river Sun, my five year walk began, and the river sang me home. Thank you. It comes from here. It does. Thank you. It's, uh, it means so much to me. Thank you, Linda. That was a very powerful song. So we're coming close to the end of this evening's six minute escape. And we'd just like to remind all of you that if you've enjoyed this evening's presentation and you'd be interested in making a donation to the Arts Council Halliburton Highlands to support these sorts of presentations in the future, you can do that through the GoFundMe link which is, I believe, just below us on the screen here. So if you just click through that link, um, any and all donations towards the Arts Council Halbert and Highlands are greatly appreciated. Don't forget, if you're at all curious about, you know, hearing about what the various presenters tonight uh, uh, do in their artistic lives, uh, join us for the Six Minute Escapes After Party, which is also linked in the description below. Uh, there'll be the opportunity to ask people questions through the live chat. And uh, there'll be time uh, just right after this event for you to click on that link and uh, go on through. And the Six Minute Escape After Party is always a fascinating opportunity uh, for yes, anyone to ask any questions that they might have in mind. It was wonderful when we did it last time. We're looking forward to it again. So our final presentation this evening comes to us from Rosanna Dewey, a local artist uh, whose artistic practice was very much transformed the last year through the COVID-19 pandemic. And it really encouraged her to look inwards in terms of how she created her art and to make it a, a daily practice in a whole new and different way. So I'll let Rosanna tell you her story. Hello, welcome to my studio. My name is Rosanna Dewey and I'm a painter. I 
I uh, thought I'd give you a tour of my uh, studio today and uh, some background on what I've been working on over the last year. It's been an interesting year, uh, very challenging. Um, I was uh, focusing in on um, figurative works before our first lo lockdown. And um, once that happened, my focus really changed and uh, I didn't have any models, I didn't have access to models. So I decided to um, start self-portraits. And uh, I did daily self-portraits and I wanted to create a visual diary of everything that was going on. Interesting enough, uh, them being so small in format, uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but when you have a small um, uh, painting, it really requires the viewer to come close to the picture. Uh, which was everything we weren't supposed to be doing. Um, I guess I wanted to be close even if I couldn't, uh, if I wasn't being allowed, I was going to get people to come close to my painting if it wasn't going to be me. I uh, ran into a problem with the supplies. Um, my oil paints ran out certain colors so I had to order and I um, uh, so uh, it was a very long delivery time and, and so I had to get creative and um, I started using whatever I had on hand. So I moved uh, into um, uh, watercolors and charcoal and I did uh, numerous drawings and uh, I worked with uh, gouache and acrylic. So um, one of the things I also started to do was I taught myself how to make paper. And when I made the paper, I then used the paper to do self-portraits. Um, these are some of my samplings here of my handmade paper and um, uh, charcoal ink drawings. I um, also had uh, created some um, concertinas, which were, um, which are uh, basically it's an accordion sketchbook. Uh, these are done with um, gouache, watercolor, pastels, again, anything I could find, trying to capture myself. And um, I tried to also do some of um, concertinas, just showing my day, my day, my day to day routine in the studio out in the garden when we finally could get out with the nicer weather. Some uh, seedlings I got, I was worried about what was going to happen over the summer and uh, my gardening. Uh, so these are some of um, the concertinas which I created. I um, also worked quite extensively in my sketchbook, which um, here are some of the drawings which I had done, uh, material which I collected, a lot of uh, hair um, drawings, uh, and uh, my struggles with the hair and and of course our, our dreaded mask uh, wearing my new uh, my new uh, mask in the winter i also uh, decided to uh, explore printmaking and uh, my husband again now uh, he uh, made me a copper plate well he banged out a copper plate for me that i could use for printing so I did do um, a number of prints. And I explored color here, um, playing with the color in my hair. Uh, when you do yourself a lot of times over and over again, I wanted to try to make myself look different. I, I did return um, to oil and um, I got a little bit bigger in my works and uh, also did uh, some in acrylic. Uh, I'm currently working on um, uh, oil, back to oil painting, a series of eight by tens 
of myself, uh, this time uh, works on canvas. I now have quite a collection of self-portraits which surround me in my studio. In a way, it's like a crowd has gathered. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you, Rosanna. And thank you all for joining us for our spring edition of Six Minute Escapes. It's been wonderful having you here. Don't forget the Six Minute Escape after party will be starting momentarily. So make sure you click on that link and join us there. We'll see you in just a couple of minutes and have a wonderful evening. See you soon.